This is the trickiest geometry problem you've seen. Let's explore how to figure it out using some clever thinking. Let ABCD be a rhombus such that ADC is 46 degrees. Got a rhombus. A, B, C, and then we've got a point D here. So that is D over there. And then A, D, write that. Let's draw that better. Maybe something like this. So we have got a rhombus, and basically we're given the angle condition ADC. So A, DC is 46 degrees. Okay, now this is where the problem gets a little complicated. Let E be the midpoint of CD. Let F be the point such that BE on BE such that AF is perpendicular to BE. So BE, something like that. Midpoint, midpoint. AF. AF is perpendicular to BE. What is the degree measure of BFC? So it's kind of this like random seeming angle. What is that angle? How does it have anything to relate to our diagram? So basically, the idea for this problem is that a common approach is to just try angle chasing. You know, let it be variables. A, 90 minus A, I don't know, B, but it turns out that this is not enough. Like This will not give you enough information to find B, F, C. Because it's very hard to use this midpoint condition. Like this midpoint condition is the weirdest thing. And it's kind of the goal of the problem. So a strategy in geometry problems is to see that ADC is 46. Got these 90 degree angles over there. We've got a rhombus, which means all of these sides are equal. Okay, that's maybe something to use. But the weirdest condition is this midpoint condition. E is the midpoint of CD. I mean, this is an angle chasing problem. And it's not like there's isosceles triangles or anything. What does this midpoint condition mean? And the key idea for this problem is trying to figure out a way to use this midpoint condition. So rather than these midpoint lines, I'm just going to say that it might be easier to understand. This is x, this is x, and then of course this will be 2x, 2x, and 2x. Of course, it's a, d. Okay, so the, we have to try to somehow figure out what should we do. What should we do to use a midpoint condition? And midpoint means two sides are equal length. Two sides are equal length, well, I mean, if we had some other conditions, we could form congruent triangles. Could be, right? If we had some other conditions, along with the fact that two segments are equal, we could form, form congruent triangles or maybe similar triangles. And that would give us angle conditions, wouldn't it? Because we know the angles of similar and tri congruent triangles are equal. So our goal here with our process of thinking is to figure out midpoint condition to angle condition, because this is the angle problem. And a good way to do this this is going to seem a little crazy at first, but we're going to extend this line BE such that it intersects like that. Okay, let me draw that again. It extends so that it like meets right there. Now, what is this? Well, 80, if we extend 80, it becomes this segment here, or as I drew it a little bad, but this segment that I drew there, we know it's a parallelogram. AD per parallel to BC, right? AD parallel to BC. That means this whole thing is also parallel to BC as well, right? I mean, after all, all we did was extend this line. Even if maybe I should draw drawn that better. And then it meets at some kind of point here. Let's just call this point F. So it's easier to refer to. So the key thing here is that because these two lines are parallel, this part is also parallel to this part. Parallel lines mean similar or congruent triangles typically. Oh, wait. So if this is A, this is A, then this is B, 
that's going to be B because they're an alternate interior angle, right? That's the property of parallel lines. These angles are equal like that. Those two angles are going to be equal. Okay, that's, that's cool, but two angles equal, one side equal. That's AAS congruence, right? Angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side. AAS congruence. These triangles are congruent. I mean, that means, of course, that the angles are all going to be equal. I mean, did that really tell us anything new? Hmm, no, it didn't. But you know what it did tell us? That the sides are also equal. We know that this side is equal to this side. So that means this part is 2x. Also, we know that this BE is EF by congruent triangle. So E is the midpoint of BF. Now you might be thinking, well, we just converted one midpoint condition into another midpoint condition. How exactly did that help us? Good question. Let's find out. So E is the midpoint of, I, mean, I probably should not have called this F because there's already an F. Let's call it G. E is the midpoint of FG, right? Okay, but... We also know that D is the midpoint of AG, right? Because they're both 2x over here. Interesting. Midpoint? Okay, the next thing. Right angle. This is also kind of like another wonky condition. How do we maybe use that somehow? Right angles. I mean, maybe we can incorporate it somehow with our midpoint condition. Just try thinking about this for a moment. Right angles and a midpoint right here. So this is, we know that this is a right triangle, right? A right angle. Another thing is that this is also a right triangle, right? Because there's a right angle here at the, at the vertex, right there. Right angle, midpoint. That reminds me of something, doesn't it? You know how the property in right triangles where the midpoint is equidistant from all three well, from all three vertices, the midpoint of the hypotenuse, because of how you can inscribe it in a circle like that. That's what I'm being reminded of here. And so that's why you're going to draw this line, DF. That's the midpoint condition. So DF is also 2x. Hmm, that's interesting. DA is 2x. DF is 2x. That's cool. So. If this angle is B, then this angle is going to be B. That's, that's definitely helpful, right? Oh, but we also have another pair of isosceles triangles. 2x, 2x. That's crazy, right? So another isosceles triangle pair. Hmm. So maybe if this is C and then this is, maybe I should make it a little more clear. Let's draw with the thicker color. So this angle is C and this angle is C. That's also true by isosceles triangles. Okay, let's take a look at what we're actually trying to find. We're not trying to find area or anything like that. We're just trying to find one simple angle. B, F, C. B, F, C. Hmm. B, F, C. Okay, so B, F, C is kind of like an indirect angle. Let's see if we can connect it to the diagram we already have. We've got this 90 degree angle right there. We've got this C angle, this B angle. Oh, I see. This angle here, plus 90, plus B, plus C, makes up a circle, 360 degrees. C plus C plus 90 plus angle BFC is 360. So BFC is 270 minus B minus C, right? Hmm. We still haven't used the 46 condition. We're very close. We just need to find B and C. That's all. We're so close. Maybe let's try using this 46 condition. Remember that ADC is 46 also means this is 46. Hmm. The 46 condition is now what we have to try and use. We haven't used the sum of angles in this triangle yet. So that means that, means that this part is 180 minus 2B. This part is 180 minus 2C. So 180 minus 2b plus 180 minus 2c is 46. 
360 minus 2 times B plus C is 46. That means 300, 314 is 2 times B plus C. So B plus C is 157. Isn't that the exact same thing there? B, B plus C. This is equal to 270 minus B plus C. So this is just 270 minus 157, 113. Oh, wow. A very cool solution. So the main thing that's kind of hard to see is to just randomly extend this line. So why did I extend that line? This midpoint condition. It's really bugging how this midpoint condition we can't use. So the way I, I would use that condition is extending this line. Why? Because then maybe we can, we can form some kind of ratios because we have this kind of ratio one to one and by forming some more triangles, we can have congruent and similar triangles and it just kind of opens up the picture. We've got opportunities to a lot more and there's many other ways to solve this. There's like 10 other ways to solve this, but this is the easiest one to find in my opinion. And it has a very clever application of extending the lines. And then we saw the similar triangles of, or the congruent and similar triangles. 2x, 2x, and then we notice that all three of these segments are 2x. And then we also saw this midpoint to hypotenuse condition. 2x, 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 and then we just use isosceles triangles because we know that this is also 2x. And then from there, it wasn't too bad, just a simple angle chase. And that's how we got 113, a really cool problem.